Hello again. If you remember in our previous tutorials, we started using ActionScript to create code that allows us to manipulate the properties of objects, create instances of objects exclusively with ActionScript, and we also learned how to create comments. Everything we've done so far has been running in a straight line. We have code that begins on the first line and then goes one line at a time. What we're going to do now is we're going to start using what's known as functions, which allow us to group lines of code in a specially named group which we can then have run outside of the normal linear order. Functions are used a lot in ActionScript. And a lot of times, functions are actually called methods, which you might have heard of before. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the basics of how to create a function. Functions are always started with the function keyword. So I have a new file already created here called functions.flaw. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have my first frame and my layer 1 here selected so I can put the action script in the correct place. So in the actions panel here, I'm going to create a new function starting with the function keyword. When I use the function keyword, you'll notice again it will turn blue because it's a recognized word in action script. Every function has to have a name. The function name is what we're going to use to execute the function code. I'm going to call this run me. You'll notice again the naming convention of camel case where I start things with the lowercase letter and then words after that are appended to the end of that using capital letters. After I've named the function, I need to use a pair of parentheses. The parentheses will actually contain parameters we can configure the function with which we'll show in another video. At the end, I need to put a colon and then for now, let's put in void. This actually is going to be explained in another video. But for now, just make sure that you include the colon void at the end. All the code that we're actually going to have inside the function is going to be inside what's known as a code block. Code blocks begin with a curly brace, which is the shift bracket button, which looks like this. And it ends with another curly brace, which usually is on another line. When I go inside of these and I press return, you'll notice that, at, that Flash automatically indents things a little bit. This is called white space characters, which allows me to organize my code visually so I can actually see and recognize that the code that I'm writing is part of the function. This is actually done automatically for me in Flash. You can actually, you can actually customize some of these options in the Flash properties. Using white space characters to help organize and visually break up your code allows you to more readily be able to identify your code and what it's doing. You might notice that people indent their code or use the brackets a little bit differently. Fundamentally, the white space characters don't change anything of your code. It's just visually organizing it in a, in a visually appealing way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function uh, code block here and use the trace statement. So I'm going to use the trace statement, and I'm going to just output this is the run me function. There, my function's complete. I have a single line of code inside the function that now I can access by using the function statement. Now let's actually access the function using run me. When you use a function, you need to include the parentheses at the end. So in this case, I'm going to execute the run me function using run me, open and close parentheses. And then again, just like with ActionScript, every line has to end with a semicolon. Speaking of that, you might notice that in this, in this case, line 1 and line 3 do not end with semicolons. All the lines that are inside the function have to end with semicolons, but generally the opening and closing parts of the function don't need them. In fact, if I actually put a semicolon here, I will get an error when I run the program. So let's actually run this and see what happens. So when I run this, the output panel displays the text, this is the run me function. So now I've been able to verify that the function runs. Something that's interesting about functions is it doesn't really matter where they are in my code here. For example, I could take this, I could reposition my, my function call here to the beginning of the application. If I do this and run this again, you'll see that it still runs. The position of the function is irrelevant if it's before or after the function call. What's going to happen is that when it, act, when it actually gets to the run me function call at the, on line one here, it's going to search through the entire code, find the function, and then run it. 
in the beginning, I was talking about all the code that we were doing was running linearly, meaning it was going from line 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. Now with functions, we're able to encapsulate all of our code that may, we might reuse over and over again, allow it to loop, and actually go through the different parts outside of order. If you notice, when I actually create another run me function here, it's actually going to execute the code twice. That's because the function call is being made twice, so the trace statement actually happens two times. What we're going to do in the next tutorial is show you how you can modify the function to be able to actually accept parameters to customize how each function is going to run.